Hello everyone, Chris Odegaard, the prolific investor here. Hope everyone is doing well, hanging in there during this coronavirus thing, as well as the financial aspect of it that is following. So I've debated by myself for a while whether or not to do a video on this topic because it's not my area of, area of expertise, frankly. But what I do think I'm good at is surrounding myself with people that are smarter than me, and frankly, there's a lot of them, and leverage their knowledge. Take what I know, combine it with what other, other people know, and develop some good strategies, plans, tactics, and educated opinions about what's going on in the world, whether it be related to coronavirus or investing. So I've done that and I've decided, okay, I've got some ideas I want to share about the coronavirus that I think, and I hope uh, you'll find useful. It's interesting how things change. I'm usually on here talking about money, finance, and investing, and all of a sudden we're in this healthcare crisis. At the end of the day, your health is the most important thing because if you don't have it, no amount of money will buy it. So it's just interesting how things can change so quickly. So what's different about the coronavirus than, say, the flu, for example? Well, three things. It's more deadly, it's more contagious, and you can spread the disease when you have no symptoms. The data I see is that, you know, for about 14 days. So you can actually have no symptoms, not even know you're sick for the first 14 days and you're going about in the world and infecting every other person that you come into contact with potentially. So how do you stop something like this? Well, three things. Quarantine, you keep people home for the most part except for essential things. Number two, when you're, when you're out and about, you keep a social distance, six feet is what we're being told. And the third thing is you wear a mask. Now, this is the thing that, that I'm not seeing, which is still amazes me. So why are masks not in use? What I understand and, and what we're being told is, you know, they're not 100% effective. And they may be more effective for the person, the healthcare worker that has the disease and is trying to prevent spreading it than it is effective for the person who doesn't have the disease and is trying to not get it. All that's true, not 100% effective. And, you know, the N95 is the most effective um, than, you know, putting on a bandana or some type of other mask. But just because something isn't 100% effective doesn't mean you don't use it. For example, I ride a motorcycle, I wear a helmet, I drive a car, I wear a seatbelt. Just because neither of those two things is 100% effective in preventing serious injury or death doesn't mean I don't wear them. Anything to increase your odds in your favor, you should do. And then I also think there's social pressure. In Asia, it's very common to walk around and see people wearing a mask. Not very common in the United States. But let me tell you what, the first time you go out and you wear a mask, you'll be over it. Nobody's going to look at you sideways. It's not going to be any big deal. So put on a mask, you know, when you go outside and the first time you do it, you'll, you'll be over it. Trust me. The two people that I follow the most on this whole situation is Chris Martinson and Adam Taggart. And they have a company called Peak Prosperity, and you can find them at peakprosperity.com. And Chris puts out a daily YouTube video on the coronavirus, which is very, very useful. Chris is a, is a scientist, and he's very facts and data-driven, so it's, it's very good information. All right, in just a minute, I'm going to do a screen share, and I'm going to uh, do what I usually do. I'm going to do a math example about this. And hypothetical, but based on, I think, some realistic numbers. So stay tuned. Okay, so here's my, here's the little spreadsheet I put together to do a math example. 
what we've got here is weeks from zero to 20 weeks. We've got the number of infected people week by week and the total number of deaths. So total infect weeks, total infected people and total deaths from week zero to week 20. And we're assuming that I'm assuming here that week zero is today, the day that I put out the video on YouTube and on my website and there's 100 viewers. 10 of them, 10 of the 100 are asymptomatic, meaning they have no signs that they're infected with the coronavirus. And um, in the next week, each of those 10 goes out into the world and unbeknownst to them, they infect 1.65 other people. And I'll tell you why I picked 1.65. And based on a death rate of 3%, which I think is about what they're telling us, uh, how many people die. So let's just kind of walk through this. Here's week zero. We've got the 10 people of the 100 that watched this video today that are infected. In week one, they go out into the world and each infect 1.65 other people. Now you've got the 10 people plus another 17. Now we've got 27. And so this just keeps going, you know, week week by week by week. And you can see that after 20 weeks, you've got 2 billion, 900 million something people infected and 87 million people have died. Now, I put these dates on here because it was December 30th, let's just call it January 1st, when the first we first heard out of China about coronavirus. So that was really week zero in the real world in terms of what's going on. And here we are, we're down here in like the fourth week of April. And based on this, this little example that I kind of made up, which is why I used 1.65, there have been 452,000 some people infected and 13,000 people died. Now, if I, let me just make this a little smaller. I'm going to go to a particular website. So as of today, according to this particular source, so where were we over here? We were here at the last week of March, 452. Wow, this is really close. Well, anyway, as of today, you know, 452,000 something cases and 20,000 deaths. So these actual numbers, you know, based on the amount of reporting and what we know, which isn't perfect, and this little example are kind of close. So what I'm trying to highlight here is this is all, this has all happened in my basic little simple example here uh, from people going out who were asymptomatic and not wearing a mask. Now, some of that would be taken care of by social distancing, but social distance won't take care of everything because it's just not possible everywhere. And you see it around. People are not always uh, far enough apart. The other thing that this doesn't assume, this kind of assumes that these 10 people that went out in the world on week one and infected 1.65 other people I didn't put in a calculation here that said, oh, well, they also went out again in week two and three and four. So this is underestimated. Anyway, this is my little example. I hope that you find this useful. Let me show you a couple other things. This is uh, Chris Martinson and Adam Taggart's company, Peak Prosperity at peakprosperity.com. This is their YouTube channel, and you can see uh, these are Chris's uh, daily daily updates, 17 hours ago, one day ago, two days ago. I think he's on his 60th or something like that straight day of putting out these videos. So that's all I've got for you. Catch you next time.